It's amazing what you can do to yourself in the blink of an eye that can take an incredibly long time to correct. I'd been a healthy human being growing up and all of a sudden I literally couldn't wipe my own ass. The Hickory Clubs gave me something to look forward to. There's something about hitting a, a pure golf shot with a hundred year old golf club that's irreplaceable. But really, the, the icing on the cake is seeing somebody else light up playing these old clubs. I don't need much more than that. I'm originally from Jacksonville, North Carolina. The goal of every day was to get down to the beach. I just like being outside better than inside. And that might be the simplest way to put it. Fishing, camping, playing golf. I still ride dirt bikes. So I went up to NC State golf management program and, and I said, where do you do the internships? They said, anywhere you want where there's a golf professional. And I said, even the West Coast? And they said, yeah, the West Coast. And to me, the light bulb's going off, surfing, surfing, surfing. It was magical. And I think everybody that's been to Bandon feels that way to some extent. My first week there, working at Pacific Dunes, I stopped in the Bandon Dunes golf shop to say hey, and I said, who's that girl with hippie hair? Chelsea is from here in Nakusa. It was getting about three months till she needed to come here to Sand Valley to help open the place. I said, do you think they would have a spot for me? Her jaw hit the ground. She couldn't believe that I would think about moving away from the water, but that's how much she means to me. The next year, I had made it. I was a head golf professional. We were running a nice hard stretch of work and I got half a day off and this was the 10th of May. And, uh, and things got real, real quick. I had a hot rod racing four wheeler and it was the first time I'd got it out for the year. Your classic case of spring fever. I was just ripping it up, going about as fast as it would go. I hit a puddle, ATV shifted. When it landed, I was offline, hopped the ditch, and on a race in ATV at the top of fifth gear, the last thing you want to do is head into the trees. I'm laying on my back, tons of adrenaline pumping. I even got up. And that's when I started to notice some things were pretty severely wrong. I had some friends. They pleaded that I go seek medical attention. I politely and then probably impolitely declined. My biggest worry was I got to work on time tomorrow. The last thing I wanted to do is leave my teammates stranded. I just felt like I needed to get home, shake this off, get back to real life. And that was an interesting evening. By the morning, we just knew that something needed to happen. So we go to the urgent care place and the doctor picked my arms up like this. He goes, keep them there. And he'd take his hands away. And there was nothing I could do. They just fall right down. He said, you're wasting precious time right now. You gotta go. It's never a good feeling when you can kind of feel like the frantic nature of the nurses and doctors looking at you. It became apparent I was gonna need surgery. I had a full femoral fracture. So your hip comes out of your pelvis and then makes a 90 degree, goes down to your knee. And uh, it's actually the thickest bone in your body. I broke it on a 90 degree. I had fractured my C5 vertebrae in my neck. Had a little fracture in this shoulder up at the top, so neither arm really was working. That's when reality actually started to sit in. I had to learn how to walk again. I had to eat with my left hand, which is funny because that was the broken one, but this one was not 
cooperating and going to the bathroom, the simplest of things, everything had to kind of come back from scratch. I never felt anything but guilt. I felt like I let people down around me, but people, unconditional kindness and loving and forgiveness. Nobody asked questions. Nobody cared what happened. They just wanted me to get better. When I left the hospital, they asked if they minded if they used me as a, a case study because they said it was a miracle I didn't die and then uh, a secondary miracle, I was millimeters away from becoming paralyzed. Oddly enough, most of my emotions were relatively positive. From here, every day, every moment was a success story. As the season progressed, I progressed, um, but I was never really back moving. I was pretty useless, really. I had a great friend from Bandon he gave me a call one day. He's like, I'm gonna send you some Hickory golf clubs. You should fix these. You should give it a try. And I think he knew that I simply needed something to entertain myself with. You just can't find hickory like it was in the late 1800s or early 1900s. You can heat up the shafts and put them in a jig and apply pressure in certain ways and let the heat reset the grain of the wood. Sanding and sealing the shaft because you want it to be watertight. A lot of them have negative bounce or a sharp leading edge. You can bend them a couple degrees. So I'd say I'm not building the clubs, I'm, I'm restoring them for modern play. When I came to the shop, I didn't have to worry about anything. It all drifted away and it gave me a simple task to get excited about. And that was really the trick, setting my sights on a new goal, not just getting better, but when can I restore a whole set of hickories for myself? When can I walk one golf hole? When can I walk 18? All of a sudden, it's these clubs that I was just tinkering with, and now I can go hit them. That was the birth of Hickory Revival. We're facilitating introductions into Hickory Golf. On a broader spectrum, we're trying to help existing golfers find new ways to get excited about golf. There's some level of appreciation that comes with playing these old clubs. What keeps me motivated to continue working is give you a little rundown about the club and some of the history and maybe some quick tips to help you enjoy your round a little better. It makes it easy to put the time in in the shop because I know I can look forward to that. And I love my shop time, but really the, the icing on the cake is seeing somebody else light up. If I tried to thank all the people that deserve a thank you, we'd be here all night long. At this point, I just try and pay back the world around me. I will never take it for granted. I can promise that.